every Friday here on the show, courtesy of our friends at the DQs of Northwest Edmonton and Sherwood Park. That's Palisades, Nemeo, Newcastle, Westmount, and baseline road we give you a chance to you know, basically fire up your flamethrower right we give you a chance to, to get your hot takes out to the audience the thousands of people that need to hear it so right now it's time to bring the heat and we want to hear it we're grateful these are all emails to talk at ryanjesperson.com it's the flamethrower and we kick it off with this one from steven who says jespo i am of the belief that the premier daniel smith has timed the release of the current parental rights conversation as part of a strategy for the ndp to light its hair on fire and put a more beatable leader in place now steve says i'm not going to get into my personal thoughts on these issues but i'm watching the ndp and their supporters take the bait hard hook line and maybe sinker that from steven i would agree with you steven this is something that everybody's going to expect ndp leadership candidates to chime in on Uh, by the way we'll have a leadership announcement next week right here on real talk this one from angela who says johnny can you load up that picture angela says ryan they say a picture is worth a thousand words and these are the words glaringly missing from this picture everybody on the podcast we're talking about that photo of daniel smith sipping a can of canada dry out of a straw you know the whole thing going on with the single use bylaw down in calgary and all that jazz angela says you know what's missing from this picture class maturity grace humility poise and most importantly good judgment from the person leading this province i have just Three words, says Angela, raise the bar. I like that. Nice little reference to what Jason Kenny promised he was going to do when he was elected. You remember that? This from Ron, who says, I am frustrated. I'm befuddled by the province's decision to single out LGBTQ2S plus kids for no other reason than to appeal to a misinformed, bigoted, ignorant group of parents. The decision is drawing criticism and condemnation from across the country. And it bothers me that instead of focusing on other more important issues, the government's giving all well-meaning Albertans a bad reputation. These kids deserve to feel safe and comfortable in our schools. I've got a close friend I've known since before they came out. Had these rules been introduced when I and they were in school together, they likely would have been unable to transition. Yes, the provincial government can focus on more than one issue, but I can't really understand how or why this policy is a priority priority over, I don't know, affordable housing, cost of living. It serves as a distraction from the government's own failures. A premier and her government are an embarrassment, not just to well-meaning Albertans, but to Canadians. Three more years of this bullshit, man, says Ron. I love this province and I will until the day I die. I'll go to bat for it and defend it with every fiber of my being. But I can't defend the indefensible and the unnecessary state-sponsored bullying of vulnerable kids. Keep on keeping on. That from Ron. We promise we will. How about this one from Crystal, who says there's a hundred things wrong with Daniel Smith's new policy, but as a teacher, I'm just going to address the ones affecting kids in school. First of all, how in the world do conservatives justify an opt-in policy for sexual health education and gross big government involvement in matters of sexual health curricula? In the absence of consistent and informed sex ed from parents, you know, a lot of off, a lot of awful parents, you know, an awful lot of parents do not have conversations about body parts and consent and reproduction and birth control and STI protection. Now kids are going to get their sex ed from the internet and their ignorant peers without adult input? I mean, how do parents opt in? How many parents will miss the memo? How many kids will miss informed instruction because of this stupid policy? Oh yeah, let's increase sexual activity and curiosity without information, shall we? And watch the teen pregnancy and abortion rates and rates of STIs rise Great job, everybody. Crystal says this could not be a more foolish, reckless, backward policy. The entire province should be freaking out over this. Now, I have words, she says, nasty swear words for every aspect of this policy. But I'll start there. That from Crystal. And this one from Kyle, bit of a different direction, who says, Something I've noticed, Ryan, since I started tuning into Real Talk, is how self-entitled your liberal guests and audience members are. They can't blame anybody or anybody else for their situation other than the UCP. Like, people are homeless? Must be the UCP. People are addicted to drugs? It's the fucking UCP. It's too cold in the winter? Danielle Smith must have left the air conditioning on. You got cut off in traffic by a truck? The UCP and Take Back Alberta. I think some women in your live chat blame the UCP. Oh, I'm not going to read that part. He says, maybe that's... (laughs) Okay, never mind. He says, everybody likes to shit on the UCP and the ways that they're going to try to fix things. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of the stuff they do, I don't agree with, but at least I'm not a partisan hack blindsided by blue is bad. I went to some Alberta NDP town halls on the pension plan stuff, and some people there were so old, I think they went to Woodstock. 
What's wrong with fucking Woodstock? Anyway, he says, the only person there that was under 35 besides me was an Alberta NDP plant and a baby. He says, I asked many people there because I wanted to hear their take. You think they had opinions based on CPP versus APP? He says, no. It was like, Danielle Smith's trying to take my money and I don't like her. He says, you're going to be long dead before the benefits of APP affect Alberta anyway. And now the rapid fire round. He says, are you an activist journalist that gets the zappy zap and arrested because you entered a restricted area by police? You deserved it. He's talking about Brandy Morin. He says, let's set up the encampment on your yard. Or are you a nimby schmuck? Are you unable to use your critical thinking hat instead of the UCP? Stay mad, everybody, says Kyle. You think people that have alternative opinions are automatically trolls and should be banned from speaking? You're the problem with today's political discourse. And if you think parents don't have rights, and this is going to be some sort of a slippery slope where the UCP attacks abortion, he says, A, abortion's federal, and B, Alberta fully covers abortions and some drugs, and C, if you're so worried about abortion, why don't the liberals just make it a law instead of fear-mongering and bringing stateside issues up here? Well, because it happens all the time, Kyle, that's why. He says, might I add, it's funny how with like trans issues and women's issues, it's like, if it doesn't affect you, you shouldn't have a say. Well, if that's the case, I'll take my guns back because a lot of people who haven't even touched a gun somehow think that they should be able to touch mine he says that said if i see you out ryan or johnny i'll buy you beers and if you hear this and you're offended stay mad everybody i hope you find a cure for the ucp owning your headspace 24 7 that from kyle to talk at ryanjesperson.com you can send us your flamethrower 24 7 make sure you put flamethrower in the subject line of the email it's proudly presented every friday by our friends at the dqs of northwest edmonton and sherwood park we got a banger lineup of shows for you next week in the meantime stay safe out there everybody we will see you tomorrow that's saturday february 3rd at larry alexiak field in st albert for the real talk pond hockey classic 